Hello friends, Krista here with Books and Jams, and you may notice that this is not my tree in the background. I'm at my friend's house, it's Monday night, laundry night at Michelle's, and the kids are all at their hockey games or after school activities. But I didn't want to put off any longer talking to you about Life in a Jar, the Arena Sendler project by Jack Mayer. So this is a book that I read at the beginning of November and it was very moving for me. And so I just wanted to tell you a few things about the book and what it meant to me. And also just real quick review two of the movies that I watched about Arena Sendler that I got from the library after finishing the book. So first of all, let me tell you about the book. It is split into three parts. The first part really revolves around three high school students, Megan Stewart, Elizabeth Cambers, and Sabrina Coons. And these three are kind of an unlikely pairing. It really starts with Elizabeth Cambers. She is uh, challenged by a history teacher to participate in a History Day project. And she finds this article, a very small, short article about Irena Sendler, and it just hits home to her. And she tries to do a little bit more research about her and can't find very much information. So she talks to her history teacher, and he kind of leads her in the direction of some of the other girls. And they form this team to begin this History Day project about Arena Sendler. Arena Sendler, they discover, is this Catholic Polish woman who would rescue over 2,500 children from the Warsaw Ghetto. As they do this project, they're shocked that there's not more information out there about her. This project really begins to change them. We learn a little bit about their backstory, especially in this first section. So Liz, we learn about her, uh, her mom leaving her when she was young. Megan has some struggles at home too because her mom has some pretty severe health issues. And then Sabrina, we don't really learn too much about her backstory, but she has some things that hinder her from really opening up as well. The second part is a good chunk of the book. And this is the part that we go back in time, in a sense, into September 1939 in Warsaw. And we really begin to see what happened to the Jewish population in Warsaw and the refugees that came to Warsaw from other parts of Poland and how the ghetto was developed and just the increasing pressure that was put on the Jewish population. So Irina Sendler was a social worker already in Poland, in Warsaw, I mean. As, as restrictions um, were placed on her as to who could receive help from them, she was already starting to forge documents and do some sneaky things so that she could provide for the needs of the people who most needed it. So she was already a little bit subversive even before the ghetto came into play. And then they stopped allowing social workers into the ghetto completely and so she talked to a doctor that she knew and got some nurses uniforms. So she and its team of women that she developed would get into the uh, ghetto as nurses because there was a huge typhus scare at the time. And so that was uh, one of the ways that they rescued children. And so we just learned about the multiple, multiple ways that they got children out of the Warsaw ghetto and how they placed them in Polish foster families for a few days and then placed them in a temporary families in the hopes always that they would be reunited with their parents. Um, so she, all, all along the way, would write down the names of each child that she rescued and so she'd write their Jewish name, the Polish name that they gave them, and the home that they went to and put all of these names into a jar and buried the jar in order that someday they could open up this jar and hopefully reunite some children with their parents. And then the third section of the book is about, uh, we kind of go back to the girls in high school and the play that they write for their History Day project. And and then from there, how more and more people began to learn about Irena Sendler because of these girls and their project. And that's the general gist of the book. The third section was really my least favorite. Once we got past um, where the girls were a part of the play and they graduated high school, but the play still was a thing. And there's an organization now that um, still continues to let people know about this story, this part of World War II history. But it goes on to too long. It gets a little bit wordy talking about uh, some of the different awards that are given in her name now. It could have been condensed a lot more. I lost interest a little bit towards the end of that third part. But as a whole, the book was incredibly moving. And some of the things that I really loved about it, at the end, 
there are a couple pages of pictures of these people that it references in the play, including um, Irena Sendler when she was quite young and the three girls who were the original History Day Project Life in a Jar script writers and performers. So um, that was pretty interesting. And also in the middle section when it's talking about the Warsaw Ghetto, I constantly referred back to the beginning of the book where there is a map of Warsaw and it outlines where the ghetto was. And so it, it refers to street names that are on here and different uh, landmarks that are on this map. And so I constantly came back to this map as well to check that out. And so I really, I really liked that, that that was included in the book to help make it more real and give us a sense of, of where things were that they're talking about. Yeah, so this book was really heavy at times and very emotional for me. One of the things that it made me think about is why I love World War II fiction so much and other historical fiction. It's definitely my favorite genre is to read about history in in a way that makes it real to me. And well, although this is nonfiction, it made this story real to me. And one of the things that Eva, Arena's friend says to her, Eva was a Jewish woman in the ghetto and was one of Irina's closest friends and she constantly went to visit her until Eva was included in those that were taken onto the trains to go to the death camp Treblinka. So Eva challenges, or not challenges, but really calls out Irina to, to continue to bear witness and just to be a witness of all of the events that are going on and to be able to tell others about the things that are happening. And I feel like as a reader of historical fiction and a lover of history, that we in a way are doing that. We're bearing witness to these events so that hopefully things like this don't happen again because uh, it's horrible and heart-wrenching and I don't get an I mean there's a level of enjoyment I guess but it's it's more moving than enjoyment it's emotional for me to to learn about and to study why does how did humanity treat other humans in these ways and sadly it still happens today in many ways and so what can I do to be a part of of standing up for what's right like Irena did and standing up for those who are marginalized or minimized or put into boxes or ghettos <laughs> in a sense and what can I do about it um, I don't always know the answer to that but I like that books like this make me think about it and make me aware of what's going on and what went on in history so that I can think about it and and really honor those who did stand up for what's right. So I feel like by reading this in a way, we're honoring Irena and those, the team of women and men who stood up for what was right. And we need more people like that in this world. And there are people like that in this world, we just don't always get to hear about them as we didn't get to hear about Irena for 60 years, af until 60 years after the war. So that was incredibly moving. One of the things that I love is when asked why she did the things that she did, why did she stand up and put her own life in danger in many ways, quotes from her father who told her that when you see someone else drowning, you jump in to save them, whether or not you can swim. We don't watch other people drown. And I'm not quoting him exactly because I can't remember the exact quote, but it's basically along those lines that when you see other people drowning, no matter what, you don't just watch, you do your part to, to, to save them. And so Irina doesn't feel like a hero. She didn't feel within herself that she was a hero. She just felt like she was doing whatever it took to rescue people from drowning. I would say one of the saddest scenes in the book, there was an orphanage that was inside of the ghetto and um, Irina was very good friends with the, the man who ran the orphanage and the day um, it, the Germans had already begun rounding up different neighborhoods and bringing them to the train station where they would load them into the cattle cars and take them to death camps. And the day that the orphanage um, neighborhood was going, the book described other neighborhoods being taken and the Jewish police and the Gestapo um, kind of beating people and whipping them along the way and making them hurry. These people who are already starving and have our skin and bones and already have had their dignity stripped from them continually being beaten on the way to the train station. And yet on the day that it was the orphanage, um, it was the day after or shortly after Eva told her to bear witness. And 
the children from the orphanage and the workers from the orphanage marched the two miles to the train station, which was on the other end of the ghetto, um, singing. They marched to the train station singing. And instead of beating them and whipping them and humiliating them, the soldiers just marched alongside of them and people came out from their homes and and Irena walked behind them with others and just followed them and and bore witness to this atrocity that was happening. And that was the part that I finally had to put the book down and just cry because it, it broke me. Just imagining the scene and imagining what she was thinking about how she's here she is trying to rescue children from the ghetto and here are hundreds more that that she's unable to save and how that must have just broken her heart and it broke my heart reading it um it was pre pretty emotional reading that day um but this yeah this woman just really was an inspiration to me and made me realize again why i love historical fiction i would highly recommend reading this book with the understanding that the ending gets a little bit wordy and drags on a little bit. It's not the most fabulous writing, but the story itself and the, the history of this woman and the organization and others who did their part to help the Jewish population in, in Warsaw during this time is really meaningful. And I would suggest that you read this book. As soon as I finished reading that book, I learned that there was a movie that was made called The Courageous Heart of Irena Sendler. And while I was looking for this online to borrow it from the library, I also found another documentary about Irena Sendler in the name of their mothers. So this, um, this is a, made by Hallmark. And it was good, but after having read the nonfiction book, there was definitely things you could tell they were smushing stories together and changing the narrative just a little bit. And so having been so moved by Life in a Jar, this one kind of made me mad. That's not how it happened. So while it was good as a movie, it, it wasn't the greatest, actually, it wasn't the greatest movie, but I liked the visual of imagining, I didn't like it because it's horrible, but it really did help with the visual of seeing the starvation and the children in the ghetto and the pain and her and her work and the sewers that they rescued children from and some of the things you read about in the book, it's, it is always good to kind of get a visual of that from the movie, but we know us book lovers that the book is always better than the movie so this movie was not my favorite i did i did appreciate this one a little bit more produced by pbs and it was much more accurate than the hallmark movie obviously but also uh i liked it because we got to meet Irena sendler herself she passed away in 2008 i believe at the age of 98 so this was made in 2011 uh, just a few years after she passed away so in the movie uh, we did get to meet Irena Sendler and hear her speaking in Polish, obviously translated, about some of her memories and why she did what she did. And she said again that quote from her father about rescuing those who are drowning, um, whether or not you can swim. And just hearing from her own mouth some of the things and just her humility and kindness that just emanated from her. She was a lovely woman. and really just constantly spoke about all the other people that were involved as well. Um, so the, I, I enjoyed watching this one uh, more than more than the dramatized version of the story. I would highly recommend reading books like Life in a Jar that highlight areas of history that we don't know very much about. This makes me think of Ruta Sepetis and her books uh, Between Shades of Grey and From Salt to the Sea, which also highlight two events during World War II history that we don't know very much about. And although they are both fictionalized, they do bring about, um, bring knowledge and understanding to us about areas that we may not have ever heard about. And I liked that about this as well. I may not have ever heard about Irena Sendler, but I'm really glad I know about her now. And I'm, I'm very intrigued to, to learn more. So I would recommend reading this and watching or and or watching a movie about her and just really diving into an area of history that maybe you don't know that much about and bearing witness along with me to these events that that shape that shape our world today really and challenge me as a person to stand up for for what's right and to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves because really that's what she did so that is my little chat about Irena Sendler and Life in a Jar. I will be talking to you more in a video tomorrow. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.